All right, so I did a cone six wood firing just for fun and some issues here. Uh, these are cones five and six here, here, and here. This was a little overfired. Uh, top shelf pink is supposed to be a raspberry from the high fi from the cone six mastering cone six glaze book. I see a vase in the back. Looks like it made it. Obviously some clay, some lights are melting going on here. Some flower pots there, there, and here. Some others that I didn't tumble made it. That one there's cockeyed. I don't know if that melted or if uh, I'm not sure what happened there. So let's uh let's unload this first shelf and I'll put them on the board and we'll talk about them. Alright, so these flower pots are just something I I threw quick and I just gave them a quick dip in um that raspberry glaze, which obviously went pink and obviously melted. This clay must be right at the cone five six absolute limit because uh, I know this kiln overfired a little bit so those are interesting interesting result those are getting in the trash um, here's the same pots without glaze um, I just went through some in raw to see how they come out uh, these made it this one warped a little bit And here's one that's actually undamaged, a little ugly pink color. So, hmm. Uh, these bowls have a white base glaze. Um, I can't remember which glaze I put on that. It's badly bloated. So. Give that one the hammer, I guess. Ugly too. Uh, these were triple dipped and uh, I'll have to look at my notes. I forget which ones. Bloated. These are just kind of tests to try out this clay. This combination on the outside I actually like. So that's that. Okay, so here's a second shelf. There's three glazes in here. A um, raspberry, a floating blue, and a Caribbean sea green. I'm going to guess those are the floating blue and these are the sea green here. Uh, in all, you know, it's weird. The ones with the raspberry glaze are all bloated. There's another one that's bloated with the uh, with the floating blue. These I can't remember what I triple dipped these in, but I mean the glaze is fired all right, but they're ugly. I don't like that, but it did fire all right. Some pinholes in there. Here and there, see him. Not sure what happened there, and the piece there where somehow that didn't get glazed, which is hard to believe. I didn't see that. Some pinholes on this one. Interesting fire, though. I like that combination right there, which again is that. That white with the floating blue. So let me unload these and get them in the house and pick out the good ones and show you the bad ones. Okay, so here's the bottom shelf here. None of these really look good. Some bad overfiring. 
like what happened when my electric kiln stalled. That one's just bad. There's another bad one here. This one in the front is just laughable. Between the bloating and the glaze and the warping, just terrible. So what happens in this kiln is the flames come up out of these two fireboxes, one on each side, front and back. You know, and it circles up and around, and then it exhausts below this shelf. That brick back there blocks the chimney from most of the firing. You only push that aside when the cone before what you're firing to falls. So I push that down about cone five. Push it aside, I should say, and open up that flue. It's supposed to even out the kiln. So there would be no fire just ripping through this shelf in between these bag walls. These bag walls are, that's what you do on the first shelf um, for the flame to, you know, to block the flame coming up. So that's why I put the mugs here because they're pretty protected from ash. But it didn't really help much with the over firing issue. Like I said, I should have put a set of cones on this shelf. I didn't think of it. But this is definitely overfired. This this uh, whole kiln load's overfired, uh, which I, I knew it would be from the the way the cones fell. So let's get this unloaded. I'll get this bricked up, and I'll bring these in the house, and I'll show you kind of close up. All right. So everything inside here, and all in all, it was not a good firing. Um, the kiln definitely overfired. Um, pieces like this, the bloating, and that rough, you know, cratering of this glaze, some pretty bad pinholes. Um, it's funny because, like, these were all on the same shelf. That was on the same shelf as, you know, the rest of these here. Um, these were all on the same shelf. I actually kind of pulled these out in order too, so this one here, you know, just went horribly south. This was that floating blue just way over fired. Uh, could also be that this was right in line with the uh, yeah, no, this wasn't. This was, this was on the bottom shelf. This was protected from the fire. I think this was towards the front, though, where the fire kind of comes out in front of it. Another one there, just badly warped to overfire. And then in close vicinity was this, which is ugly, but it's reasonably smooth. Just some minor pinholes here. Um, that's a piece of ash that actually melted in. Um, another overfired floating blue. Um, and then there's a, when they came out all right, very close to it. So that one has a white liner, which a little thin, but it's smooth. Bad bloating on this one. Again, really close to it. Bad one, bad one, big bubble in that one. And got lucky here. So I'm not really, really quite sure what happened. That's one that came out decent. Um, this raspberry glaze, you know, second time, not a charm. Overfired both times, goes pink. Not attractive at all. So, overfired, warped. And here's one that's overfired but smooth. So, pretty uneven heat in this cone on this firing. I have to work on that. It's another ugly one. Junk. 
Now this is the Caribbean Sea Green. Just a clear base from the uh, Mastering Cone 6 glazes. Um, here's the recipe here. It's the Cone 6 Glossy Base. So that's that glaze. These here are ugly. It's I just layered this one. I can't even remember what it was. But uh, it's ugly nevertheless and full of pinholes. So uh, that was the first shelf there in the bottom. That was in Path of the Fire. Uh, especially when you slide that trick brick, the fire is going to kind of rip across those. This was the second shelf. I don't remember missing a spot. I'm not sure what happened there, but ugly, ugly. And this one's semi decent pinholes. Nothing saleable here in any of these. I, don't, I think every single one has a defect. Overfired, ugly pink. You know, ones like this pinhole. Of a tankard. This is just straight floating blue. In and out. Not horrible, but pinhole. And this Caribbean sea green again, pinholes. Plus, it's dark. Not really sure. Well, I know why. A, it's over fired, and B, this kiln went into reduction. I mean, these are oxidation glazes, pinholes. So, you know, learning curve. These, again, were just a kind of an experiment. This is all that recycled clay I have. And, um, you know, I just kind of made some, you know, two gallon buckets of glaze there, so to try and glaze these up. So I got my electric kiln going, and, uh, you know, I like this floating blue. It's kind of cliche, but I like it. Curious to see how it would come out in oxidation versus reduction. I think this is one of those rare glazes that it doesn't matter what what atmosphere you fire it in. I remember reading that this this floating blue it doesn't make a difference. But um, yeah, knees were on the top. These are really overfired. That's that sea green. I might have double dipped that. I think I did. I think I double dipped that with the floating blue. You can see the edge there. But just bad bloating. Because what I had done is I had stacked these pots. I stacked these flower pots. All the ones that are in big melted messes that are still outside. You know, I had stacked them like this. You know, ones that fit, obviously. And I took these and I stuck them on top. And I think the the weight combined with the overfiring just really melted the the flower pots. Um, when I didn't stack them, you know, they fired okay, but the glaze is heinous, terrible. And this is a little pot I made. It's cracked, and it was cracked going in. I knew it was cracked. See that there? So I figured I'd throw some glaze on it and see what would happen. So this is that raspberry glaze. And I just kind of splashed some raspberry inside. Um, you know, another flower pot with that heinous. This one I just kind of, I think I, I think I glazed that one upside down, poured it on. And... One of my kids was goofing around with a flower pot and made this one. It's um see there when I when I put the other flower pot on top, you know they stuck in the kiln. I should have I should have watered that. I knew better. I should have put wadding in between these pots. Um, but they did tap apart. Um, normally in a straight gas firing, I um you know what we I wouldn't water them. I would just put them on top of each other. And it would be fine. But, you know, again, learning curve. All in all, 
out of all these, I probably have pff, 10 that I can maybe salvage. Again, nothing I could ever sell, just throw them up in a cabinet, but you know, I took some good notes and um, hopefully next time would be better because that pink is really bad. So I need to step on my glazing game here. Terrible, ugly. And I'm not quite convinced that this glaze fits this body. Because once in a while I hear that tink tink that the glaze is unhappy with the body. So I'll let these sit a couple days. No crazing though, which is good. So it's close. So anyway, more failures. You can't win them all. Thanks for watching.